Welcome to Ron's Computer Videos. Let's talk about Apple speakers. Not those speakers. And not this speaker out of a Quadra 700 either. Oh yeah, these speakers. So way back in 1993 when Apple uh, introduced their kind of short-lived power CD uh, CD drive um, which is uh, more design uh, than it is actual function. I mean it's pretty but imagine trying to take this on the road with your power book. Anyway when Apple introduced that uh, CD-ROM drive they at the same time got the brilliant idea that we're gonna produce some really nice speakers to kind of go with that in the whole CD revolution. Uh, I mean it was 1993 so uh, you know it was still kind of a novelty then uh, to have uh, sort of a um, you know some fancy speakers hooked up to your computer uh, you know kind of in an era when you just had like PC beeper sound kind of in the uh, the PC world you might have had an ad lib or something like that but um, uh, mostly that was for gamers uh, these devices were or these speakers were designed to hook up to your Macintosh or you know I guess any computer or any kind of device like the uh, you know, power CD that had a eighth inch stereo output or RCA outs. Uh, so that way that you could have uh, high quality, uh, well, high quality uh, audio kind of on your computer. Keep in mind, a lot of the Macintoshes at that time just had like a single uh, speaker, kind of like the Quadra 700 speaker that I showed you a minute ago. That would have been like the entire Mac 2 series, Mac uh, Classics, Plus, you know, all the way back through history. But uh, these speakers were kind of an, a, a nice uh, way to uh, kind of up their game. And uh, let's take a look at some of those today. So right here, these are the original uh, Apple-powered speakers. Um, these, uh, the design on these, they're they're kind of weighty if you pick them up, and it's it partially there's a there's a big piece of steel here in the base to kind of keep them from toppling over. But these were really nice. Um, they used traditional speaker cable to kind of connect uh, the main uh, speaker over to uh, the left channel. And they had uh, both a, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, silk screened on here. Uh, there's a little tiny picture of a Macintosh, so they had an input for that. And they also had a little tiny uh, picture of kind of like a play icon, um, an early version of that. So this would be where you'd plug in like a CD player and you have your Macintosh plugged in. But it also had... Um, phono jacks and stuff. Actually, this one is specifically labeled for CD because you remember the um, the power CD had like some RCA outputs. So you would plug that directly in and then you got AC or rather DC input here. So I've always felt that these speakers were very, very attractive. Um, I probably bought a set of these uh, right around the same time that I bought a Quadra 610 way back in the day. Um, I always thought they sounded really, really good. So years later, uh, when I saw a uh, set come up on the local Facebook marketplace, I snapped them up uh, because I, I just remember how great these were and uh, just how wonderful they sounded. So, uh, and the fact that it came with a, um, like a um, Power Mac uh, 6100 CD, uh, that was just, you know, icing on the cake. In 1994, Apple introduced the Apple Powered Speakers 2. And these were, uh, they're smaller speakers. Uh, they have adjustable bases here on the back so you can kind of change the pitch of the speakers. Um, I, I guess partially the complaint was with the original Apple Powered Speakers, they are very much set up to be placed kind of uh, akimbo on the sides of a monitor and you know you just have that audio playing at you but you know different people have different setups. So the idea with these is if you have these speakers kind of you, you think in the old days, you got a big CRT on your desk, you might have a shelf that kind of sat above that monitor and you could have your speakers set up here on the top and be pitched down so that way that they're kind of downward firing to where your your holes are, I guess. Um, the, uh, the difference is on the, um, the original Apple powered CDs, you do have a volume control knob, an actual physical on off switch, and you do have headphone jacks and a balance here on the front. 
the the Apple powered speaker two do not have any of those things. These are very much kind of a maybe a cost reduced version of those other speakers. Um, they're a little lighter as well. I mean, they're physically smaller, but at the same time, they um, they don't feel as substantial. And um, they do have the headphone jack on the front, and they do have a volume knob, but basically these speakers are always on. So if you have the power brick plugged in, they are ready to scare you uh, when you accidentally get an alert noise or something like that on your computer. Um, on the back of these, uh, they just have, this is a hardwired connection that comes across that plugs into the other speaker. It uses a stereo, eighth inch stereo mini uh, to connect to the other speaker. Um, it has audio input and it does have two inputs here on the back. Again, one and there's a cutesy little icon of like a classic Mac on here. And then I think the other one just says CD. But um, whatever you do, do not remove this warranty sticker. And then a few years after that, with the introduction of the G4 era uh, Macintoshes, Apple released these uh, cute little orbs. And I am not sure 100% what, uh, what the real name of these things are. I think that they're just the Apple Pro speakers. Um, I know that there's two different versions because the original uh, G4 Cube, um, kind of as you see this picture out here on Wikipedia, um, the, the speakers had a, um, a USB powered, um, you know, uh, analog to digital converter. So that way that it, you know, it would basically, uh, amplify the speakers and, uh, take, I guess, some of the lifting, uh, the heavy lifting of playing audio and exported it to that device. Um, those are kind of rare and they're kind of hard to find these days. I do not have a set of those. Um, I just have kind of what came later, which is the, uh, just the regular, um, I guess spheres, I guess orbs, whatever you want to call them. Um, but the, um, they, they are kind of nice. Uh, if you have a machine that can actually drive them, that's the other problem is that these are kind of looking for kind of an amplified, um, a specialty sort of output. So uh, if you do not have one of those devices or you don't have a machine that's compatible, um, they just look really fancy sitting on your desk. Apple did make a couple of other speaker sets over the years, uh, kind of the uh, more famously like the UFO kind of set that uh, John Ivey uh, collaborated with uh, Harmon Carvin on. Um, the, uh, I, I've never actually heard these in real life, but man, I sure saw the version that, uh, that they used to sell, uh, kind of at like Circuit City <laughs> and stuff like that. And I saw them and they looked really neat, but man, I just think about how fragile those would potentially be or kind of in a long term, uh, kind of situation. Uh, that you have in a, a, like, you know, with just cracking and just aging plastics and things like that. I mean, these other speakers are, you know, decades old and, uh, I, I have yet to see a set of these come up on the secondary market that aren't missing something or something is broken or some kind of has some kind of problem. But these are also um, USB powered as well. Um, I, I, I guess, I guess, um, you know, that's one way of maybe kind of taking some of the load off the, uh, the computer itself. But uh, it just seems to me, uh, I don't know. And of course, later Apple released all those, uh, you know, iPod hi-fi devices and things like that for kind of the, the older 40 pin era, um, you know, iPods and things like that. So a nice dock. Um, I've actually heard one of these. I had a friend that had one and it sounded really nice for what it was. Uh, but probably for the money, you could have bought a, uh, a two channel receiver and, uh, bought some really nice speakers or something to go with it for maybe half, <laughs> half the amount that you would spend on this device. Um, but it looks very nice and it very much kind of meets Apple's like kind of design language of the time. So I know a lot of people bought them. And then where would we be if people, uh, you know, weren't buying the new uh, HomePod, which I, I mean, are they buying them? Who knows? Well, since we got these speakers here today, and since uh, this will in no way give you an accurate uh, sort of audition of these speakers, um, how about we uh, go ahead and raid uh, the YouTube uh, royalty-free music library and uh, go ahead and test these out. 
since they came first, let's go ahead and let's test out the Apple powered speakers. Um, I'm going to play a song that probably is familiar to anybody who uh, follows retro technology review videos on YouTube. Uh, so here we go. And the, uh, the iPad is set maybe about 50% volume, so we can uh, turn this up a tiny bit. Hopefully this is not going to blow out um, the recording. Now, I, I know you can't really tell at home, but um, they sound okay, and they sound really good for computer audio kind of purposes, but uh, since they don't have a, as you can hear, there's a lot of distortion, um, maybe we try turning the iPad side down a little bit. Oh, wait, we went too far, Captain. Okay, these are now, the speakers are at 100%. Let's bring it back a little bit. Let's turn up our source. Granted, these are kind of old, but yeah, it sure doesn't take a lot to overdrive these. And your um, bass and things like that, it's not going to sound as good as if you have like a dedicated bass and then, you know, uh, speakers that are carrying the rest of the, the mids and, and the rest of the weight. So, uh, but I, I do remember having really good times with these these speakers kind of in the the quadra days because uh, they did sound better than a lot of the um affordable affordable keep in mind uh computer speakers on the market so let's also try let's try one more thing uh everybody's uh second favorite uh person for um, for audio and stuff on uh, youtube oh lord okay let's go uh our good buddy uh, Anders Jensen, um, who has a wonderful album that is called Background Music for Videos. And um, this one right here, he is basically just released for anybody to kind of use. It's always good if you give artists credit, um, you know, and if you're feeling up to it, uh, go buy a copy of one of his albums. I think you can buy his entire um, uh, sort of discography for like under $60. And he's got a lot of really good uh, retro music. He's got a lot of very... Um, like some video game soundtrack kind of stuff that he's done. Um, it's, I, I can't recommend him enough. And, and he always, if you ever watch him on 8-Bit Keys when he's a special guest, I, he just seems like a nice guy. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's listen to, uh, this is um, uh, Smooth Bed 1. I can hear a out of vibration if I really like that's a hundred percent up right there and I don't want to blow these speakers but they do sound really good they've got really good separation and um, I mean the bass isn't terrible so I, I think that these were absolutely worth the investment in the old days and that's just not me saying it because I I owned a pair kind of contemporary to that but Anyway, I do like these a lot. Let's go ahead and uh, let's hook up the um, Apple Design Speakers 2. Now, don't get me wrong. These are some pretty little speakers, especially if you would have had like a PowerBook setup back in the day or like a Macintosh TV or something like that. These would look really uh, pretty nice sitting next to those. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and let's listen to those same things. And I'm, I'm going to warn you up front. Um, I don't super care for these. <laughs> They're okay. They're not great. Uh, I did go ahead and, uh, when I purchased these, I got these for 25 bucks off of a swap site. Um, the, um, uh, the pots, or at least the, the, uh, you know, volume pot needed to be cleaned. So that has been cleaned, but even with that, there is maybe a little bit of scratchiness when you, uh, up the volume. So, uh, please just, uh, forgive me for that. And that's about 50% of the way up. Um, just in my mind, they're, they're smaller. Um, 
which, uh, what are you gonna do? But there's not as much room in the box for things to resonate. I did take them apart. I mean, there, there's nothing fancy about the speakers that are, <laughs> that are in here, um, or the amplifier or anything like that. So, but I, they, they sound tinnier to me. Um, it, it could all be in my brain, uh, but especially right now, there's a lot of distortion. Um, and we can even try playing with the uh, kind of the input volume. Because this is, you know, it's amplified to amplified, so. But this would be maybe kind of what you would do if you were hooking up a um, an I iPod or something like that. That's 100%. The volume is up 100% right there. If I get up about 50% on the device, they get really distorted. So I'm going to bring those down. So let's go ahead and let's uh, uh, talk to our good buddy Anders again. And uh, we'll just go ahead and pick this back up with uh, Smooth Bed 1. Bring that back up about 50%. This doesn't sound terrible. Again, I, I guess it also comes down to what type of music you're auditioning your equipment with as well. But here we are. And that's 100% volume. Not as much distortion on that. Not terrible little speakers, but not my favorite either. What's this? An uninvited challenger has entered the ring. Yeah, these are my Roland M8s. Um, you know, honestly, if you're into retro gaming, these speakers are, are pretty inexpensive and uh, really blow just about anything else out of the water uh, if you're trying to build a period accurate sort of setup. Um, the, the M8s have independent controls for uh, volume treble bass uh, and uh, they they have a mic input here on the front and uh, where you can kind of adjust the volume and stuff They also have a headphone input and on the back. There's maybe some like more robust inputs Like it, it's got like, you know stereo mini jack and it also has uh, RCA jacks and stuff and unlike the Apple powered speakers uh, That uses like a traditional kind of speaker cable to connect the two speakers um, This uses a coaxial cable or just kind of an RCA cable uh, that connects the two. So you've got more shielding and stuff too, so there's less interference, especially if you're using like a monitor. Um, the Apple Design Speaker 2s, back there, um, the cable's built in, so you're limited, like the length is the length and that is it. So, uh, I for and also I forgot to kind of mention though the app, those other ones, uh, the Apple speakers, or Apple Design Power Speakers 2, uh, you could also get them in kind of the platinum or the beige color, but anyway, enough talking, start chalking. I do like these. There's not a lot of distortion. You can turn these guys all the way up and uh, they can take it. And there's, and you can make them as bassy as you want. Try not to uh, wake, wake the neighbors. Just love them. And if you're gonna hook up like an MT32 or something, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a really nice feeling, kind of that whole setup, so, but, anyway, enough tech moaning. We get back to Anders here. Just some really nice speakers. So why bring up the Rollins? Well, 
if you are um, looking to uh, kind of uh, set up like a retro uh, gaming setup and you want kind of period accurate-ish kind of speakers, I mean, uh, really, it, it, I guess it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. But I, I would say that for the money, uh, just looking at kind of how these things kind of all uh, in their little time capsule, how much they would have cost and... Uh, you know, kind of what people said about them at the time. The um, the original Apple uh, Apple Design powered speakers, um, those originally retailed for one thirty nine, and that kind of sounds right in my brain. Uh, in you know, kind of nineteen uh, you know ninety five money or something like that. Kind of maybe about the, the exact time I would have bought a pair. Um, but they, they were really good for the time. Um, the Apple Design Speakers 2, oh, I'm sorry, I should have said, um, that price, I pulled that out of the uh, January 1996 episode, or issue of PC Mag, where they did an article, it was like the best products in 1995. So, uh, you know, the uh, timing. Um, but, uh, and then there is an article in the uh, 1994 um issue of computer world that just to show you where times are all, or the time frame is all over the place the apple design power speakers 2 uh came in a bundle that apple was selling where you get a, a cd 300e so like the double speed external uh cd rom drive um the bundle was like uh 479 dollars but if you split everything out the speakers so the apple power design speakers 2 the little ones um, were 89 bucks and again you could get them uh, kind of in the charcoal or you could get them platinum depending on how you're going to use them um, but not a terrible price for for computer speakers at the time however if you were kind of in that era and you could get a hold of a set um, if you read through the Roland M8s which got better reviews than uh, some of the other speakers that they had just released like maybe a year or two before. Um, in the uh, January 1997 issue of PC Mag, where they're doing like best of 96, um, they said that the, uh, the M8s cost 99 bucks. 99 bucks, man, that's nothing. Uh, especially kind of for, uh, you know, everything you get compared to kind of these other more expensive speakers. Again, you're paying the Apple tax, but um, they they, uh, they got pretty good reviews, and they definitely, um, you know, of course, make mention about the, the whole uh, pairing it with, like, a sound canvas or something like that. So, um, but in any case, uh, some great speakers, but uh, I just wanted to share that stuff with you because I've been kind of collecting these for a little while now, and uh, I've had the power speakers for quite a long time, and I just finally found a pair of uh, <laughs> um, powered speakers, too. So, anyway, thanks for kind of joining me on this little side quest here. Um, if you liked what you saw, please uh, leave me a comment. I try to do my best to kind of respond to any kind of questions that people have. Um, if you uh, really like kind of what I'm doing, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if, you, if you, again, if you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. Uh, so I kind of know maybe what better kind of content to do. So, anyway, thanks everybody. Have a wonderful night. And remember... Apple II forever.